nuit, je peux concevoir que ma mère, dont je retrouve à peine la trace indubitable entre deux de ses monuments, emplit tout ce cimetière du lamentin, où j'ai joué parmi les milliers de bougies allumées aux jours et aux soirées féeriques de la Toussaint, d'une présence qu'aucune architecture tombale, baroque ou prétentieuse, sotte ou naïve, avec ses ferveurs maladroites d'herbes souffreteuses, n'a contraint. I was deliberately put in different words mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to struggle with it, yeah. uh, to show that people, to show people that, so people know that I was struggling with it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, a label you need to say, what, no, no, I mean, you speak Latin languages, what does it say to you? It's very close to an imaginarium. Uh, but you see, that's still not English. Yes, <laughs> so no. We do, yeah, no, I we leave it. For English. I leave it there, but con uh, um, consciousness and consciousness is not speaking, but um, I'm very pleased to see the connection that he has to art. Fantastic. And the subverted kind of network thing. Oh, I'm really, really pleased to see it. I'm really yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's I mean, I think his secret is take philosophy, take theory, but look at it through poetry. Mm -hmm. Use poetry to reread them. Yeah, that's what he's trying. Be an, an artist looking at that's what is happening. Yeah. Can I throw something in here? Because yesterday I tried to say it and I've been struggling with this and you see my anxiety is coming through when I talk about this relation to art. Uh, when I look for books on Lisant, I, I find a book uh, that was part of, I don't know, the previous documenta or something, uh, Hansel uh -huh. who is mm -hmm. a very famous uh, curator that yeah. everyone replicates. When I see something falling... Yeah, in that serpentine, he's a friend actually. My friend, I, I completely distrust, distrust the guy and distrust everything that passes through his uh, kind of world, not just because of him, but because of the way he replicated. Uh, and this is a little bit like how is he everything falling, crashing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it is like curators. Curators are kind of dictators. <laughs> in the way, they take over. All of them and they pull <laughs> So Hans Ulrich is one of those. He came know. here. He came here. Uh, oh, he did, huh? Yeah, he's a good friend. I mean, it, he's fun to eat with. Takes you out in Paris or London. He's great. Uh, but he's a curator. He's a dictator. <laughs> so then, uh, <laughs> uh, but what, what else? I mean, was the, did the film make these sounds different with Fanoi? Then go out and say that a little kid here, or mm -hmm. you, could, you could see him, what, you could understand what he's trying to do. Because he's, he's basically, yeah, yeah, I mean, we can explain him in a kind of uh, uh, didactic manner, one, two, three, four, that is, he first deal, dealt with the, the diaspora, the Atlantic crossing. And what does the diaspora mean to uh, people of African descent? Uh, so, and how do they create their relation to Africa after slavery? So, we can do it didactically like that. After that, we look at uh, what, is, what it is to live in the new world for black people. You know, what he calls the Jardin Creole. Creole garden and how they recompose their own lives with the traces of other cultures, both black, white, Indian, the climate, the geography, everything. I, so I didn't understand how that related, though, to that one set. I think that something like 
getting over what we've forgotten? Yes. I didn't understand that. Well, you know, mm, okay, maybe you can tell me. What he's trying to say, you know, the before peace and the the dominant tendency is to deal with memory. You know, because you know, blacks are forced out of Africa through slavery. So what do we name of memory? And what do you do with that memory? And how do you go back to trace it and relate to Africa to trace your roots and so on, whether it's through DNA or through the film's roots, all of that? I, it seems like most of the film was about that, you know, and was like pro, pro dealing with traces, pro dealing with authenticity, and, and no, and he's pro dealing with. He can he can deal with traces and deal with authenticity. He can be for both. Right, he seems like in favor of traces. He's in favor of traces. But that one sentence that he said, maybe I read it wrong. I no, you read wrong, it right. But he said we need to get over what we've forgotten. How yeah. is, how is, how, he seems to be about like working, working with the traces, working with. See, you're getting it, but you don't, you're not believing it. Your explanation is very clear to me. Mm-hmm. He said, he said. You know, because what other people can't get over, they really want to get, at any cost, the memory back. Mm-hmm. They want to connect to Africa. Mm-hmm. They do through Afrocentricity, all these black identity things. Mm-hmm. But he's saying, what remain of Africa is only the traces. It doesn't matter if you forgot, but if you attempt, you use the word, how you work on it. If you're working that way, well, if you want me to, to contradict myself, I contradict myself. The way you work on it, that's what your authenticity is. That's what's important. Mm-hmm. Finding the memory itself is not important. But the, the time so you... Incorporating the traces into something new. Yeah, that's, that's what's important. Say. Yeah. So your explanation to me is perfect. Okay. But it seems like a contradiction to you. So now I get it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's your, the situation in which you put yourself thinking about it, you sort about it, you create a poem about it, you write about it. It's that moment. I mean, one of you said this yesterday, that authenticity is this thing that cannot repeat itself. Yeah. Okay. So it's that kind of authenticity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I don't think he's, because he's responding to his predecessors, but also black Americans. So black Americans have a different approach to Africa. They are more identitarian. They are more, I don't want to use it, separatist. They, they have an exclusive relation to Africa. Whereas Gisa is saying, you don't need that. It, it, it just has the traces. You know, when you left Africa, you, you were put on the boat Several Africans, you don't speak the same languages, you don't, you don't have the same tradition, you don't have the same religion, they took your clothes off, uh, they, you had no suitcase. You know, when I was coming to America, I had a suitcase, I had a passport. You see, you have all these things, and that's why if you look at immigrants, they always go to the suitcase and look what is inside, if the photographs are there. Slaves didn't have that luxury. Slaves were just put in there. So Gita said, by putting them together like that, they were forced to relate to each other, to come up with a new language. You know, this is, this is what he's saying here. So when you go through the Atlantic crossing, you are becoming a new person. And this new person is a multiple person. He's not just African, he's not just European, He's not just uh, a trivialized person, but he's all of the he has several identities. And that's very important to him. I think that's what he's saying uh, in, in that particular situation. But I think the, your point about forgetting is very important because many people are completely uh, anxiety ridden when they cannot really trace their roots. And he says, come on. You know, don't make that. It doesn't matter if you forget, but if you work, it's the work that's, that matters. I mean, Saint Gaul also said that you liberate yourself through work, you know, uh, through the equipment. So, so, so that's what he's trying to say there. Uh, 
Perhaps that's the best way. Let's go through this kind of reaction. Uh, the other question I had was, and I, I think I un un understood it, but maybe you can give me more clarity. When he was talking about, for example, that relating to things via DNA caused almost more problems yes. than it did good. Yeah, because it's a, it's a detective way of finding you. And then he used the example of the Hutus and the Hutus. Yeah, the Hutus and the Hutus. And that it was our, that we create, oh, I guess what you're saying is we created, through our science, we created segregation where there was not. Yeah, through our insistence on having these genealogical branches, having families, mm -hmm. and then excluding all the people from our families, then we end up creating a situation like the group to the Mississippi. This is what he's done. You know, uh, genealogy, he said genealogy itself is dangerous. He preferred a relation of people around the world who don't know each other to uh, the relation coming through kinship. Uh, because the Hutus and Tutsis, uh, if you don't know this story, I think everybody knows the story, but they, uh, they were always there, so they were not invented. Many, some people now, they say that they were invented as tribes. They say, you guys are Hutus, you guys are Tutsis. But it, uh, it's at least possible to explain that when uh, uh, the Belgians arrived in uh, Rwanda, you know that right behind the Congo. You know, this were the, the Belgian colonies, uh, and this is where half of darkness was reached by Joseph Conrad. So when they arrived there, they usually opposed tribes to each other, and the particular opposition of the Hutus and the Tutsis was that you guys are taller, you know, you have refined faces. You are different from these other guys who are shorter and so on. So there's one opposition of family to family. Tall people, short people. Uh, you guys are farmers, sedentary, civilized people. These people are always after cows, the nomads, they have no identity. So they, they oppose them like that. So when independence came, they themselves saw themselves like that. And they finally start fighting. And of course, you know the rest, the general side. Right. So, Gisa is using that as an example of the negative consequences of genealogical truth. When you used to have the person who was the, what's it called again, the narrator, the storyteller? The Grillo. The Grillo? Yeah. That, that never caused division or war between? Uh, no, the be, or no. Or the, the different context. The, the Grio, the best way to see the Grio is to see like the blind storyteller in, uh, in the art, in the home. You know, the Grio was just telling the stories of empires. That's his main role, like the, the story of the Sujata epic, the story of the window epic. So Grios are no, no more dangerous than novels. You know, the storyteller, that's the primary role. Right, but if there was like a division or like a breakup or a fight, they participated in that. You're right. Then it was still a yes keeping that alive. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's just it's just that that was more of a um, I guess a less in, a colonialized imposed right. way of warfare. I, I think if you follow her logic, in some way not far from this one, that the grill too will reinforce his identity. This is basically the logic that it is positive. So if you are opposed to any kind of fixed identity, then yeah, you will be against the grill also. Because they were praising people, telling them how much of, let's say, a Jawara they are. And then if you feel pride, pride in that, you could oppose yourself to somebody who is not you. Yeah. So that's just, you absolutely, but you, your position will be closer to Gisa's position in the sense that he's opposed to any kind of closed identity. 
any kind of fixed identity, any kind of unitary identity. He is fixed. He is completely opposed to those. He, he now, he, I mean, even, he is not even as provisional as the guy who speaks who talks about uh, strategic essentialism. He is not even there. He, he wants open identity. What a storyteller, novelist, uh, historian, they are into defining identities. They are into defining geographies. They are into defining spaces. And they usually close them. They don't leave them open. They will say, these are barbarians. These are the, the girls. These are the Celtic people. These, these are the Indians. You know, so in that sense, Grisa will agree with you. Uh, Okay. In my tribalist sense, the griot is a good guy. <laughs> I would say, oh yeah, this guy tells my story. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm a tribalist, I want to be proud. I say, yeah, he tells my story. He's a good guy. But this I would say, be careful. You know, your story is a story opposed to the other people's story. Yeah. Uh, but let me just let you yeah. To the area that you thought interpellation you, uh, the area that you like. I like the Yeah. I thought there was a bit of a problem with that though, which is that I guess I kind of felt like, um, yeah, it's kind of like his example for opinion kind of took him into a preference. Um, and then so, but then there's a weird space of, um, you know, if if I have a preference for a person, or if I, you know, if I just generally like one person and I generally don't like another person, is that okay then? Because that's like that's that's no fakeness for myself in the sense of I like some people and I don't like other people. It's you know, and that's something that can, can function. And yet that then all of a sudden comes back into another problematic argument about right. Well, I, think, I would yeah. say it's for the reasons you don't necessarily know the reason why you don't like broccoli. Right. And that's, I think, the path we keep talking about. As opposed to not liking it because I don't know what it is. Right. See, if you don't like somebody, like you don't like broccoli, first of all, some people say, well, not liking broccoli is hard to like not liking somebody. <laughs> right. But, but the, the point yeah. is, if you don't like somebody, it, see, if you are a rationalist, a philosopher, you don't like the reason. Because if you want a law to legislate, that you know, we all like each other and we all live together. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could point to argue that this one could be opening the door for people not liking people, which is a position that's confusing you, David. But uh, I think, you know, uh, you're right in saying that it's like not liking broccoli, actually. But he's not making a judgment on it. He's saying some of these things we can't control. It's but just he is. Haven't you ever not liked something as a child and then grown to like it as you get older? There is that too. Yeah. That's the closing. That's what. Thing. Yeah. Okay. You so you get used to it. Used to it. <laughs> <laughs> you say you don't need to know something or understand something to respect it as being equal but different to you in a way. But I think he's calling calling intuition and the knowledge. Yeah. To sustain that. Yeah. Not yeah. really just that. No, it's, it's calling right. to this very cri crucial moment of your intuition. Right. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. Uh, and also, this is using that word, opacity, to help you to understand his theory of relation. He said, don't try to understand everything. Create intuition, create a relation with things instead. So, you know, because when you try to understand something, you are already imposing yourself on that thing. So, I see the logic that, you know, the critique that you're making of it, you know, because once, you know, it's threatening to say, well, I don't have to like you. Because, uh, first of all, most of us keep that to ourselves. <laughs> we don't, you know, so we don't, you can't be honest like the poet. But this scientists is not, and then the rationalists would say, well, you know, if we let this happen, the world will become a chaotic. So rationalists would be concerned about that. But this I said, no, uh, create a relation with it. If you create a relation, maybe what uh, Courtney said, maybe you get to like it. 
maybe what he's saying, your intuition will begin to re-represent that. I don't know. Uh, but opacity should be something that we have as a point of departure. Let's not come to people with transparency. Say, I know you. You look like this. I know you. This is what's going to happen. You know, that's what transparency does. You know, uh, I'm a black man. You know, you are a white man, <laughs> and so on and so on. He said, let's not do that. Let's uh, let's give a pass. Let's give the people the right to be okay. And once we give them the right to be okay, yeah. No, I mean, go ahead. What I found from the film that it was from, yeah, that I found a little bit kind of naive to some degree was that he, after the 30 years, the two, three decades, that he came back to Mexico to tell this again. But that is the point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay, this is what, maybe this is where I wanted to go because he ends up telling that, they, that you should go out, with, go out with that to the UN. <laughs> yeah, you just poetry there. I you mean, don't like the UN. I mean, <laughs> I haven't seen that the UN is. Uh, yeah. I, I like I like declarations. I read declarations like the Outer Space Declaration, like the Geostationary Orbit Declaration, like the Human Rights Declaration, and I like this from Bandung, the Non-Aligned Declaration. Also, but but how effective are they? I you know it's like that's the question. Um, so I think I got the point with poetry right. to right. them. But right. 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 What, what do you think? I, I like to know what you think because you reacted like. Well, I just found your UN comment amusing, and I sort of agree with you on that one. Like, it, it's great writing, and it's cleverly done, but <laughs> it's just it's as far as it goes. Okay. My issue with the opacity is that it it provides a means for honest connection. That the faux, the forced transparency that we have this fake relationship between others, this need to be open whether we are or not, right. prevent a genuine relationship. So let's say that I genuinely dislike you. Uh, that doesn't change the way I need to behave. Right. But trying to lie to myself about it, and fine, say it's a race thing. Right. Okay? Right. Even if it is a race thing, if I am unable to acknowledge that in myself and just go, I don't get it, I don't know why, but I'm aware of this preference, if you have to hide from that or deny it, you'll never get to a point of honest communication. Mm -hmm. Honestly overcoming or acknowledging hatred is a much more effective means of eventually resolving conflict mm -hmm. than stifling and denying it. Transparency is a common term for capitalism and businesses. Right. Opacity mm -hmm. is not. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's absolutely true. Yes. I think you both put it in excellent ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Say more about opacity, it's interesting. I have to go defend opacity in uh, documents as I get some ideas from you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the, the, the way he, one of my big issues is like I, I taught in city school and everyone loves diversity. It's a huge buzzword. But that's all I ever saw it as. No one could really justify the value of diversity, especially while you simultaneously support the quality. Mm -hmm. So when he made his comment about borders, it was such a beautiful articulation yeah. of all the things that have been tried to express as a solution. But the reality is that we don't, and this goes back to my opacity thing, we don't deny that we are distinct. We don't try to force others to be like us. Mm -hmm. We don't remove the borders, but we make them permeable. Yeah. We make it a matter of communication yeah. and relations yeah. so that yeah. it stops being me as a person that can't get through or me as a person that defines the borders but we allow the culture and the mutual identity to create different places so we can all grow and relate. Yeah. And you need that opacity, you need that center of honesty to do that. Like that becomes the part of you that moves. No, no, you, you're right. It, I mean, it, this one, some people are surprised. He's not against frontiers. He said, you know, I like to travel from Italy to France and suddenly you see a new flavor from France to Germany, you see, so we need those frontiers, but they need to be permeable. This is what he's saying. He's not, he's against frontiers, but, you know, what well, his definition in the field is that frontiers enable you to pass from one flavor to another flavor. The word used in French is savoir, which is much better, you know. Uh, 
Non, saveur, saveur. Saveur is, is the perfume, the perfume of food, you know, the taste of food. You know, so it's the going from one cultural zone to another cultural zone. That's sometimes, you know, you go from Brazil to Colombia. You know, there is a people say, the, the, that border crossing is lots of fun to them. But he doesn't believe in the borders that create walls and people can pass and it become violent. This, this is what he said. And I think you're right, when he relates that to opacity, but even more interesting, he goes way beyond Fano and Senghor when and then also from the US notions of multiculturalism. Because the reason why I like uh is finally I have found somebody who's not only criticizing the West, but he's criticizing the non-Western world also. Because he realized that they all are you know they all are positioned on grounds that they don't want to budge from. They, they don't they don't want to give up anything. You know, Africans are authentically African, Israelis are authentically Israelis, French are authentically French. So these are is are you know this uh, criticism applied to all these groups. But, and he said, actually, it's not that difficult. He says, by relating to the other person, you don't lose yourself. You know, this is why he said, I can change by exchanging with you without losing myself or genetically, you know, destroying myself. Je peux changer and me changer avec l'autre sans me détruire ni me détruire. This, this is quite important because most of the time many of us are afraid to get too close to the other. We, we are afraid of being contaminated. We are, uh, in a, the young black people are afraid of losing their authenticity. You know, don't be a white boy. That's the way the young black people say. Oh, you know, in the richer places also they don't want to get too close to the poorer people. So, this I said, you can learn from the person without losing yourself. On the contrary, you are enriching yourself. And that really, to me, is a step beyond uh, the British cultural studies. It's a step beyond what I have been uh, raised in, in black studies in the United States. But it's also a step beyond what the great white man is telling us every day. So you see, so he's not criticizing just one area. He's, he's saying every time you close yourself, you actually are uh, impeding relation. And this relation actually takes place in the, its best form through opacity. That, I really think that that's a giant step in terms of what we're uh, dealing with today with diversity, multiculturalism. He, he seriously thought about that. Well, and bringing up closeness and openness in yeah. relationship to opacity and um, transparency, we kind of immediately think on a model that transparency is open and opacity is closed. Right. At the same time, when you become com transparent, completely visible, you come to a closeness, like a resting spot of what is visible and what right. can yeah. be visible yeah. and what you mm -hmm. think should be visible mm -hmm. and how people should see or what's there. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would say that this is perhaps more transparency can, is more closed off than opacity where things are still kind of up in the air. This is why it was compared to neoliberalism earlier. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think you're right about that. Transparency is only an illusion. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit like democracy. You know, democracy is the best form we have, but democracy has trapped us. We don't have a nice, a more revolutionary discourse beyond democracy. You know, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Uh, other approaches to Mr. Gleason? I'm curious as to what you think about him talking about small countries. Oh, <laughs> I know, I know, that's just, uh, I know, it's, it's completely <laughs> true. He, he, you know, because Gleason is talking about, to, you know, it does con contradict him completely, but here is what Gleason is talking about. He believes that small countries or the archipelagos uh, can experience uh, 
faster what he calls what is his theory of la pensée du tremblement, the tremulous thinking or the quickful thinking. You know, because they can understand uh, the language of of nature. You know, they can understand the language of these mountains. So when some, some change is happening, they feel it before the centers, and the centers in this case, you know, Paris, London, New York, and so on. So he's reversing things. You know, we all think that the trends are being set uh, in the big centers, whether the trends are artistic trends or they are uh, economic trends, political trends. But he said the small places feel it first. And when they feel it first, they have more resources. Uh, and what do he mean by resources? They have more poetic resources. They have more intuition. They have more emo You know, this is no longer symbol, but they have more emotion to relate to this and to resolve it. Uh, because in the cities, in the big centers, we have lost. We have lost this relation to nature. We have lost it. So. What do I think about that? I actually like that. But what do I think about that in my theory that the nation needs to have a more a, a bargaining, uh, uh, a, a leverage to, 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 to discuss with the rest of the world? You see, because I'm still, I'm, I'm struggling my way out of Fanon, but my thinking is still Fanonian. I'm still thinking that, look, here is what's happening. You Africans will never get out of this mess until you have a bargaining position. But ultimately, the logic of this, this I would say, I'm thinking toward the end of the world. Because if Africa positions itself powerfully, Latin America positions itself powerfully, where are we going to get resources? There will be more. The reason why we have smaller wars now and victims are being killed, sacrificed, collateral damage is because Latin America, Asia, and Africa are not organized. When they organize themselves, they will be bigger wars because everybody will need the resources that they can no longer get. So, Grissom said, you know, it, that's not necessary. Fanon would say that's necessary. So my thinking is rational still. Glissant is looking for a poetic way of thinking about these things. So I realize that, but I, I'm not at the point of accepting it. This is why I'm so attracted to Glissant, because it's completely uh, telling me that I don't need to imitate the West. I don't need to have bigger powers in Africa in order to, to, to respond to the bigger power in Europe. That's what these are Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it, I have to get myself to that position because it, it, it looks like I'm responding to the sheer masters instead of saying, let's discuss this in Glissantian terms. You see what I mean? Uh, so that's yeah. So it's, it's an important point in that case. Since we're yeah. still in the economy, economy um, what, what do you know? What is there any, any position from Vietnam uh, regarding Cuba and Castro, especially like any, any Cuba? Cuba, yes, he has. He feels all the Cuban people, but Castro to him will be like Fano. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely like Fano. Castro as a person. But anyway, I was looking at more from the side of the violence, the embargo. I mean, oh, no, no, oh, yeah, this is what I mean, the, the Cuban people, because yeah. he, he gives some like many people, I think, uh, in places like this, uh, definitely think that the embargo on, on Cuba is, uh, is a violence, you know, a neoliberal violence, but also violence of a small group of people in Miami who have a la lobbying power in Washington, D.C. And, you know, you have to be, I was in Cuba last December, you know, you have to be visit Cuba to see, uh, you know, people on the one, I think everything people tell you is true, that is, they have more doctors, they have more, you know, uh, developed people are developed 
as opposed to other third world countries. But there is a time there in Cuba today. People are really you know, suffering at the same time. And that's because of the U.S. embargo. All that has to happen is for the U.S. to open the door for Cuba. Whole of Latin America, because Cubans have that is that they can export. They have health. It, it will just subvert the, the health care system in America in a minute. And many people do not want to see that. They do not want to see a small country like Cuba influence not only Venezuela, Brazil, Latin America, and U.S. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. There are many sides. There are many lines spreading from there. But one that kind of relates to what we just saw is that um, when he talks about the Creole Garden, mm -hmm. and he says that it's something that disappeared, well, that is kind of an old issue and it's not there anymore. Um, so you're right, because Cuba has a lot of organic farming, it's got yeah. a lot of estuary, yeah. it's got a, a uh, lot of things that the embargo uh, kind of forced the plant. And also Latin America, and you see this with the indigenous communities, mm -hmm. still alive, and we're trying to, to get back to that, of course. Not with, not, with that, not with that despair that we need to get back to the past, no, no. But know that, for example, just put it to continue with the economical problem with the Monsanto uh, maize. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, of course, that completely ruined uh, our. No, no, I didn't put that in the film, but there is that. He talks about Monsanto oh. and Chiquita Banana oh. and all these things. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's true. I mean, the idea of cre Again, he. And my, I edited the film, so I wanted to lead the Creole garden to a poetic level where you can apply it. And if, if the two of you are saying that this actually literally exists today as part of organizing communities, yeah, so I understand that. But the film is trying to posit it as poetry, you know, where you, know, you have a lot of trees and there feed each other, they become organic, uh, yeah. uh, and these are reasons, right. as opposed to one tree that kills the other tree around it, and so, yeah, no. Now, by the way, it's really nice, the, the tree you have there for... Yeah, that was, that, that's in front of his house, yeah. and uh, we kept making this film, and I said that he had not talked about the tree, because I, I, I trapped him like this, I said, you know, in black American literature, especially feminist literature, black feminist literature, Alice Walker, Zora Nicholson, Tony K. Bambara. When you read them, there is always a tree, and the tree is always blocking the door, and the tree is the symbol of man. The black man just closing the door, and the black woman came past. You can see this, he, you know, from the eyes we're watching that to the present, you know, in literature. And he said, no, the tree is completely different from for me. The tree is the genealogical tree, and that's our biggest problem. So he went on this very poetic explanation. I mean, my intention was to really have him be as simple as possible. And because when you read the book here, it's, it's really complex. You know, any of his books, you know, because it's poetry. Yeah. Do you want to say something? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Over reactions to this, you be some. Because when we come back, we just talk about this idea of two more, which kind of relate to this other thing. And sometimes I feel like I'm repeating myself because I think we were doing these things in last night's lecture and then we have to repeat them again. Okay. Yeah. Two, 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 three, it's fine, you know, if you want that. Well, yeah, that's inside there. Yeah, that's where do you want to meet? Um, and where? As you like, I propose that space on the hotel. Okay, yeah. so like round leather yes, places across the water. Uh, if we meet there at 2.30, mm -hmm. it will be calm. You know, people will have People will have gone? Yes. Okay, you want to do that? Yeah. Uh, or we can also, we can also ask for uh, Everest P. If someone is there from here, Everest P is a good apartment with a lot of space. Where is that? It's a little bit longer that way, but uh, what I want to try to say is your rush for the clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's yeah, just in the hotel. Yeah, the okay. it, uh, even in the lobby of the hotel, it's possible because. Yeah. Well, if, if it's warm, we could do it outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
You know, if it's warm, guys, let's think about that. Yes, we can see in the garden. Yeah, if it's warm. Okay. I'm an African, so let's be culturalist. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so this. <laughs> let's meet at the round place across from the bar at 2.30. And, and decide. Yeah, and decide. Yeah, either at the bar or outside. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I'm going to try to be on time. It sounds like, sorry, I'll be, I'll be there. Okay. 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 No problem. I think that it's just as like a, a last thing. I, I agree most with Lee now. It's, you know, yes. fennel and sort of, uh, you know, like, there's oh, the other theories that I can... Watch out, I grew up phenomenon. Oh, yeah. I can <laughs> <my> <laughs> life, <laughs> and it's like, it's, I, I can see kind of like how that is, a, it's a valid viewpoint, absolutely. Like, it's something you can spend a lot of time on. Yeah. But in terms of, like, facilitating growth and facilitating, like, the reintegration, I think that Lee Sao has the best. Gisa had the hindsight. He was in that picture that he saw. But he also lived until two years ago, a year ago. So he was able to really look at all these things. He was able to look at multiculturalism in the United States, and which was very, I mean, you, uh, maybe the limits of multiculturalism in the United States is necessary, but it's really hypocritical. He was able to see the immigra immigrants coming to, you know, Turkish coming to Germany, Africans com coming to France, and so on, Caribbean. He was able to see all these things, so he has an advantage. And also he's a great poet. You know, he's a great poet. And he, we are at contemporary debates, really, uh, he finds a place in this contemporary debate more than Mr. Zaire, the noble people. I think that's what uh, makes Jim a, a much more interesting, uh, much more interesting both than Senghor and Fanon, definitely. Because the Fanon position, opposition of positions in politics makes sense, but it doesn't make sense in human relations. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, this opaque way of relating makes better sense, you know. Then you get to know each other. Then we can speak for each other much, much later. But you know, how a relation, how the intuition. <coughs> okay, so on peut partir. Il est